First reading from Maccabees this morning is some story. It seems incredible that a mother would ask her seven sons to die rather than to eat pork. But there's something bigger, greater here. The refusal to eat pork addressed their fearless proclamation of faith, faith in a God of life. The Maccabees family accepted death rather than to renounce their faith, their beliefs, to turn away from God. The Maccabees reading today is certainly a story of heroes, but it's also giving us a glimpse into the people of Israel who were starting to develop, to tr- starting to understand the ideas of eternal life. Eternal life that was based on God's mercy, God's goodness, God's justice. And sometimes, to make a point, we go to extremes. And we might say the Maccabee story is an extreme. The Maccabees sacrificed, and there's a word for you, sacrifice. I, I, I think that you know, many people sacrifice in many different ways uh, in their lives. There, there's no question about it. But it's also a word we don't hear much about either. I remember when I was a kid, you know, you always did something. You would sacrifice it. You would give it up for some good reason. And we, we don't really talk that way. Hopefully we live that way, but we don't hear that too often. But the Maccabees sacrificed their lives to proclaim that faithfulness to God that integrity to the faith and the living of the faith are more important than life itself. Today's scriptures invite us to think about, to reflect on the great and the small things that may threaten our integrity as people of faith that might threaten our living of our faith in any ways throughout the days and the weeks and the months. Because we too are faced with challenges to our faith every day. My guess is that no one here in this parish, in this area, will be asked to die for their faith. However, do know that there are people every day in other parts of the world who die because of their faith in God. But what are you know, some of the challenges that we face to our faithfulness in God, to our faith? For instance, does the living of our faith compare to what God asks of us. Well, what's God asking of me? Well, we can start with the commandments. We can start with the beatitude. We can start with the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. How are those part of our life? I'd say, well, Father, uh, a little, a little, a little uh, short on remembering the spiritual works of mercy. Well, God gave us a great gift. It's called the Internet. Use it. <laughs> we go and Google everything else. Google things about our faith. You know, 
Feel good things about our faith. You know, let that be a reminder to us. But are we living the commandments? Are we living the Beatitudes? Are we living the corporal spiritual works of mercy? When living our faith asks of us for sacrifice, how do we respond? You know, um, some people respond very well. But sometimes, as people of faith, you know, we say, well, you know, I'm a person of God, but this doesn't fit into how I live my life. Uh, my schedule doesn't permit this. I, I think a little different on that issue. It's not my way. Of course, it ain't all about me. How about God, too? You know, we would probably never say, although sometimes it does happen, that I'm walking away from God. We would never say that. But you know, sometimes subtly in our lives, we do walk away from God or the ways of God, at least at moments. And the question becomes, how can I let God be part of my life more and more and more as a person, as a family, a church? How can I persevere with the grace of God? Does the life we live at home in our workplaces, our school, whenever we're out and about doing whatever we do, do our actions, do our words, say to others, I am, we are, a person of faith, that God is important to my life. Do we, do we talk about our faith? Do we talk about it? Do we talk about our church in the good ways? Do we talk about, I, I said at the 8 o'clock mass, yeah, we talk about the pastor, you know, tomorrow morning at the uh, lunch counter because he talked for 11 and a half minutes, you know. He usually doesn't go longer than eight and a half, you know. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you, I, I also used the example of you know, he locked some doors this Sunday. Well, they're locked because there's some problems with them. But the funniest part was, this door over here, um, it's locked because we're having a problem with the closure. And uh, I was standing at the altar facing this way for the recessional song, the closing song. And as I'm standing there, all of a sudden you hear, click! The thing felt, well, I don't know if it hit anybody, but it, it could have. Somebody went out the door, although it says, please use another door. So, <laughs> that has nothing to do with faith. It's called following directions. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, do we talk about our faith with other people? Do we say, hey, you know, I, I, I heard about this. Father Joe talked about this in his homily. Bring a bulletin. Bring a bulletin. I don't know who saw the bulletin, but uh, I've had a few people say to me um, before Mass started, Father, love the picture. Love the picture. Anybody, who, who didn't see this, the bulletin yet? You all saw the bulletin? Raise your hand if you didn't see the bulletin yet. It's okay if you didn't. It's okay. There's no, no demerits for this, okay? Okay. Well, I, on the picture is a picture of this little kid with a cell phone in their hand. Okay? And the words say, she's obviously on the phone talking to somebody. It says, so today in church, a guy dressed in a dress tried to drown me. <laughs> and I kid you not, my family just stood there taking pictures. <laughs> it's a great little thing. A, a former parishioner 
sent this to us um, a couple, about a week or so ago. And I said to Stephanie, uh, our pastoral associate for administration, I, I said to Stephanie, we got to put that in the bulletin next week when we have the baptisms of these children. Huh? You know, I, I was telling people, again, we, you know, we don't talk about this. Um, I had a little luncheon with some people the other day, uh, a minister, a local minister, and another priest of their diocese. And uh, we were talking how that church, for instance, live streams its services. And the priest said to me, do you do that? I said, yes, we do. Yes, we do. You know, now I tell you that, that's fine. Do we tell other people? You know, hey, you know, we, we know that a few people haven't come to church today. Normally, you know, this is overflowing in here. Not. <laughs> but do we tell people, hey, go to the website. Why don't you look at the, the, the service, the mass? Huh? Do we do that? How, what are the ways that we encourage others to become people of faith? Encourage them. You know, we, we can invite them to Mass, yes. But, you know, there are other things that go on in, in parishes or in the church in general. You know, there's a dinner. There's a speaker. Hey, why don't you come with me? We'll pick you up. We'll go out and have a pizza later. I mean... You know, th this is how faith really develops in, in many situations because of relationships. I, I used to be involved with Curcio, and Curcio had this phrase, make a friend, be a friend, bring a friend to Jesus. Who are we bringing to Jesus? Family, friend, whomever. Maybe today and every day, we can ask for the prayers of the Maccabees family. Their prayer for us as we try to imitate their conviction, their courage every day in living the faith, in being faithful to our God as a person, as a family, and as a church. I believe faith comes to us in many ways. It's gifted to us in many ways. And one of the ways it's gifted to us is through the people of our lives. We have baptisms today. These parents who are having their children baptized were modeled the faith by their parents and generations before. We need to continue that. The thought came to me as I was finishing my homily thoughts this weekend or this week. Two things more popped in my head. One was, look around you. Not just here in church, here in church too. But look around you in wherever you are throughout your life during the week. Look for the people of faith that are there, that you interact with, that remind you, these people of faith that encourage you to let God to continue to be your guide in living life. I was thinking about that, and... Uh, you know, I, I see lots of different people in the parish and outside the parish who really live that way. You know, th their life is different than mine and different than other people. But our lives can be faithful lives of faith. I, I was thinking as I thought about this the other day about this family I know in Virginia couple, married couple, seven children, seven children, faithful to their faith, live it, you know. I I'm guessing that's a bit of a challenge to them at times. Seven kids, the oldest can't be more than 10 or 12. They go to church every Sunday, every Sunday. I can't imagine the chaos <laughs> that might be in that house. 
But I know their parents. They're people of faith, number one. The father is a former federal prosecutor. The mother, catch this, former MP. I think she rules the house. <laughs> but they, 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 they live, you know, it, it's amazing. Uh, I, I get, I see it sometimes on Facebook or Twitter, or whatever those things are. You know, the kids are doing this, they're doing this. And they're always dressed. They're always dressed. That amazes me. But anyways, what are the people around you? And secondly, lastly, pray that others will see in you, will see in us, will we'll see in our family, see in our church. People of faith, people of faith who are convinced, convinced that God is, is the guide always, a guide to living life here on earth as well as eternally in heaven, that God graces us every day and guides us always, everywhere, and eternally.